Hello, welcome back to my workshop. And as you can see, it's in a bit of a shambolic state. While I'm working on upgrading the hot end on my Ender 6 with a Bontech DDX, I also want to kind of revive my Ender 3 so I can prototype while the other printer is in the works. And maybe I just got used to Ender 6 and the stable frame where leveling the bed is not that big of a deal anymore but defender free there's always some issues so it doesn't matter who you follow or what videos you watch you probably notice that every ender free owner invests immediately into cr touch or bl touch type of sensors to detect exactly the differences in the different areas of the bed and then allow the printer to adjust the printing depending on those differences. So you don't have to excessively level it every single time. So the product itself is very simple. You get a set of brackets, which are basically fitting to your printer to attach the sensor to your hot end. The sensor itself is also pretty cool. It has a light to indicate the status, which I'm gonna show you once we actually plug it in. But other than that, it's just a plastic bit with a tiny metal piece which protracts to detect the differences on the belt. And that's about it. Let's get to work. We are gonna need to flip the actual printer, so prepare it by removing the filament or any extras you might have. All we need to do is really just access the motherboard, which is hidden under the box I'm pointing at. You're also gonna notice that there's one screw missing. Undo it if you have one. Then undo the rest. I have one more missing, and that's again strategically for me not to unscrew every single time I need to modify something. But you might have three, so unscrew all three of these screws. Now it depends what motherboard you run or what firmware you run, but note down whatever you see on the actual motherboard because it's gonna tell you exactly what firmware you need to download. You can also find out information on printer info page in the actual printer UI. But first things to do here is really unplug the Z-stop cable because we're not gonna need it anymore. And of course, don't take it anywhere. Just leave it hanging there because who knows, maybe you want to someday come back to the old config. And this is a custom SKR Mini Ender motherboard. You might have a standard motherboard, but what you need to do really is to find either a Z probe like I'm showing here or that BL Touch port. They are both the same and they're going to both fit the standard cable for the CR Touch and BL Touch. And once that's done, all you have to is just cable manage so the cable goes through and you can attach it on the other end and super quickly put back together your printer and put it upright so we can continue our work. The hardest part is already done. And now we're going to need to install the right firmware for the BEL Touch or CR Touch to be detected. You need to format the SD card fresh so it's completely empty with the new firmware. And the next thing to note down is that there are different motherboards but also your firmware might be different. And you need to know that information to download the right software. It could be SKR Mini, which I'm running, let's say. It could be version 4.2.7 or any other version of Ender. It could be Ender Max motherboard and so forth. But know exactly that because it's going to be easier going forward. And so to cover that fork, let's say you're running the stock Ender free firmware. What you're going to need to do is go on Creality Downloads page and find the sensor software. Here, you'll need to pick out that motherboard I just talked about, specifically exactly which fits your requirements. It's as simple as that. Let's say if it's Pro CR Touch firmware for Ender Free Pro, you just hit download and that should be it. You can unzip it and there should be bin file, which you just drag into your freshly emptied SD card and that's it. However, if you're running Marlin, you're going to need to go to Marlin CRC ID AU and find the firmware page where everything is listed. For my specific motherboard, it's SKR Mini E3 version 2. 
There's a few different variants. I'm gonna go for the top one with more downloads, but I just trust it more. Again, you're gonna receive a bin file in the same way, just drag it into your SD card to flash. Now here's a tip, if the name of a firmware file is exactly the same which you have installed on your printer right now, you're gonna to need to rename it. I like to give it a custom name, just either gibberish or just firmware 123.5 or something along those lines. Don't forget the bin extension at the end. The actual installation is gonna take maybe 10 seconds. So meanwhile, we can take off the Z stop of which cable we already disconnected from a motherboard. We just wanted to get it out of the way. And next is simple stuff. We just need to check that the actual sensor is being detected in the firmware that it's installed properly. So navigate to about the printer page and just see that there is the Belidier auto leveling installed. And again, this is Marlin UI and the interface, but yours might look slightly different. Next step is really to attach the actual sensor. All you need to do is take off a fan and then attach using a correct bracket the sensor next to your hot end and then reattach the fan on top of that. Once so that's done, find the cable which should go out of your motherboard. That's the BL Touch CR Touch cable we inserted before and just attach it to the sensor itself. Then some cable ties to keep it together and we're almost done. Next set of instructions are important, so pay attention. You're gonna want to auto home existing printer and just let it quickly get into the center or where it thinks the center is anyways. And so it's gonna use a probe to check the Z axis and the height of the hot end. Whilst it cannot know it because of a mechanical nature, we're gonna need to therefore set the offset ourselves. Think of it as the difference between the hot end and the sensor probe. We need to tell it exactly where that Z value is. So go to motion and we're gonna use Z axis motion to lower it down until it's touching the paper to see if it's level enough. And just like you would manual leveling the bed, try to find that value and no take a note of it as well. This is just a checkup to understand exactly where the offset is by the way. Next, we're gonna need to take that value and set it in, in the actual settings so that it knows for the next time. Your UI again might look different, but find something which says probe Z offset or Z offset and just set that value then store the changes as the settings. And we're gonna need to create initial mesh. Go to motion, select bed leveling and level bed. It's gonna take the readings from different parts of the actual bed And the last thing to do is just to store that mesh as the settings, just like we did before. Go to configuration, store the settings, and that should be done on a printer end. But what we're gonna need to do is tell the slicer software of the changes so that each new design you're gonna print with this new setup is actually gonna be adjusted for the real center. So open Cura or any other software you're using, go to manage printer, select the printer profile which you're using and in both settings you're going to find star G code area. Here you're going to need to add just after G28 a G29 and that's about it. You can also add a comment just like I did but G29 is all you really have to add after that line. And that's it mate, close it down and you're ready to print. Now slice some sort of designs, put them on and just let it print. But as you can see here, for example, I'm printing the leveling lines, which is one of the designs you can find on Thingiverse. I'm gonna leave the link in the actual description. You're gonna notice that there is a bit of under extrusion in certain bits and a bit of stringiness so i still need to check the settings and i'm also thinking that there could be something to do with the clockiness in the nozzle but other than that it seems to level the bed pretty well now if it doesn't work for you for whatever reason in any of the steps make sure to repeat it 
or troubleshoot with that specific step in mind. One of the culprits usually is with the offset value and tweaking it. So make sure to spend a bit of time on that specific step as well if it doesn't work for whatever reason or let's say it underprints or there's stringiness or some other kind of defects to your prints. Just play with it. You're gonna get hold of it and it's gonna you know become second nature in no time. And once you optimize it, the manual bed leveling is gonna be in the past and all you have to do is really just to adjust the Z offset and you're good to go.